Hey guys, last night I watched the movie Floating Weeds by Ozu. And uh, in my previous video I had mentioned that when I first started really exploring film, I checked out the Criterion Collection. And uh, at the time I was collecting a lot of DVDs. I had a big DVD collection. And um, I bought some Criterion on a whim. And it totally random, I knew nothing about anything at the time. So I bought, uh, one of the ones I bought was An Autumn Afternoon by Ozu. And uh, it was 10th grade, and I remember sitting down and watching it with my dad. And uh, I think he was incredibly bored by the whole thing. And even me, I was not used to seeing something like that. You know, like, I, I really wanted to appreciate it, but at the time, I don't think I was ready for it. You know, sometimes you see a movie, and you're like, I should see this later in life. And I, I don't think I had even the maturity to recognize that at the time. I was just a little like, that was nice, but but I, it was lacking and um, and that's because Ozu for the most part is deeply concerned with very like simple stories they're, they're just little little f familial dynamics or th the characters like just sitting and talking and visiting each other and um, an autumn afternoon I haven't seen it since I gotta rewatch it but um, I remember it being particularly very simple it was a very simple story and, um, and uh, since then I've watched a great number of Ozu movies, well, a handful. I saw Tokyo Story, Good Morning, uh, uh, The End of Summer. I, I, I saw those ones and he never really grabbed me. Like I, I knew, like I, I could tell he was great at what he does, you know. Uh, one thing I really did appreciate about him is he does these like locked off camera angles, like not, nothing ever moves. There's never any like fancy camera movement or anything like that. It's just these really nice, usually 4-3. I don't think I've seen a film by him that isn't in the 4-3 aspect ratio. Uh, maybe an autumn afternoon, maybe I'm re remembering wrong, but, um, but uh, just these really nice still shots comprise his whole movie. And, um, uh, and, uh, but beyond that, I always had a hard time kind of tapping into the stories he was trying to convey. I felt like they were very, uh, both concerned with the minutia of life. They wanted you to be deeply invested in the little things about these people and their little struggles and their petty squabbles and these, and, and at the same time, they were so lackadaisical, it kind of made me drift off and want to just like pick up what I wanted to pick up and otherwise just let it slip slip through and that battle really wrestled with me I couldn't I couldn't both be super interested in the minutia and also lulled and relaxed watching this very slow paced movie and um but then I watched his movie uh Tokyo Twilight and after watching four Ozu movies that didn't quite hit me right like Tokyo Twilight I adored and it's by far his saddest I've seen matched only by floating weeds which I'm getting to but uh, Tokyo Twilight's just a really devastating sad story about regret and uh, I remember just sitting watching it alone I think sometime during the start of COVID I was just watching a lot of movies at the time and um, I was just like oh man this is this is when an Ozu movie connects with you and that that's still probably my favorite, but uh, I think I really started to appreciate him that day, and I've been wanting to watch one of his movies since. So I finally said, hey, I want to watch Floating Weeds. For some reason, that one, I think it popped up on my queue or something, and I was like, okay, I'll check this out. And um, it's a really interesting movie. It's about a theater troupe who comes into this village, and uh, they're there for a number of months. And, you know, the, all the dudes are just horn dogs. They all want, like, a, a mistress or girlfriend while they're in the town. And it centers around the lead actor, uh, the, the, the master, they call him, of, of the troupe. And um, he's just this jackass. And I think uh, I kind of have a false expectation with Ozu still, even though Tokyo Twilight was so devastating. And uh, I, my expectation is from, like, an autumn afternoon, good morning. Those were my two first Ozu movies. And they're like really wholesome, sweet movies just about families. And there's arguments and there's like disagreements. And, but those ones are just particularly kind of quiet. And the sadness is a, a sweet sadness. 
and um, that expectation I keep carrying into these movies and then like like Tokyo Twilight devastated me and then this one was equally depressing you know the this main guy the master is just a total jackass and he he really wants there's a lot of empathy in Ozu movies for the characters even the worst ones and I think you really feel that this guy wants to make like things right with his family and uh, I'm not gonna go too into synopsises and stuff uh, because I personally love diving into movies knowing nothing but um yeah it's just a it's just really depressing to wa watching this guy think he's doing the best things for his troop and his family and uh just time and time again lashing out and kind of ultimately falling into a pattern of repetition where he's doomed to repeat himself and uh that, yeah, I'm like, wow, Ozu's really sad, <laughs> which should be obvious at this point, but I, I keep going into his movies expecting different. But uh, this one's in color. Uh, a number of his I've seen are black and white. Uh, I think he did a, a six color movies. Uh, but yeah, it, just beautiful compositions, beautiful cinematography. The, the characters just talk right into the camera when they're having conversations, which is a really interesting choice. It's something I think we've seen more of since him, but like picturing somebody creating in the 30s, 40s, 50s, like that back then that had to be a deliberate choice. Like nowadays it's just an option because these people paved the way, but like back then Ozu had to like kind of pave the way and like do something that probably felt wrong. And I think some people still like watch his movies and they're like, oh, this is very confrontational. The person's looking right at me, but um. I like those choices he makes and the, the the beautiful simplicity of his camera is is a nice change of pace because I think a lot of people make the wrong assumption that good cinematography is lavish cinematography. It, it's swooping angles, tracking shots, it's long shots. You know, people get a boner when a movie does a, a, a long take and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's all cool if it's in service of something that's great. but. I find myself equally, if not more, impacted by really simple choices. And um, I think simple choices are easier to wrap our heads around if you're creating something. So don't always feel like you have to make a crazy choice in order to impact people in, on, on an emotional level. You, you, sometimes the quieter choice is the one that will hit people just as hard, if not harder. And um, yeah, I think that's what Ozu if I take away anything, it, that, that's how I feel, both, uh, both sad because it's a sad movie and I'm like, I'm constantly reminded that these greats in history like Ozu were, weren't always the craziest directors. They, they were very simple directors. They, they, they made the choices they had to make to complement the stories they wanted to tell. And, um, and it doesn't get more complicated than that. It's just, it, it's just simple. It's simple and sweet. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to watch more. I get intimidated by how many great filmmakers there are in history. And then you're like, oh, Igmar Bergman has dozens of movies and I've only seen three of them. And then Ozu has dozens. And, and um, But uh, it, just Japan alone, so many great freaking directors from Japan. Um, but yeah, uh, just sharing my thoughts. Uh, that's all I got to say, I think. So I, I hope you have a great day. I love movies. I'm Joel. Bye-bye.